Hi, this is Christy Sleninger for Dynamics 365 Finance. Today we're going to walk through the basics of revenue recognition and how it's used on sales orders within the system. I'll begin by navigating to the revenue recognition module. From here, I'll choose orders and then choose all sales orders, which will open up my list of sales orders that I have in the system. I'm going to choose the link for the existing sales order that I have already created. My sales order contains three different items. My first item that we have at the top is the laptop. You can see here in my columns, I have a new column called revenue schedule in my grid. In the revenue schedule, I have nothing defined here for my hardware item because this item will have revenue recognized immediately upon invoice for this item. And because of that, I don't need a revenue schedule. For my next item though, which is a sustained engineering service type item or a support type item, I have a revenue schedule defined for that line of a 12 month schedule. So what this means is that the item cannot have revenue recognized immediately upon posting the invoice, but instead has to be recognized across a 12 month time frame as we actually fulfill the obligation for that contract with the customer. Our third item has a one occurrence revenue schedule assigned to it, and this item is for an installation service item. Here's an example of an item where you could actually use a start and an end date for a milestone type situation. For example, let's say that the customer purchases a laptop in September, but they come back in the month of October to actually have the installation completed. What we could do is we could define a start and an end date in October to define when the install will happen, and our revenue will be deferred up until that date or that point in time. If we go up to manage on the action pane at the top, there is a new section called revenue recognition. If we choose the revenue price allocation, this window can be used to see the revenue price that will be used from an accounting perspective when we post the invoice. Notice in the first columns, we have the amounts that are shown to the customer on the sales order and the corresponding invoice. But if we look over to the allocation amount, these are the amounts that are calculated for the revenue or the deferred revenue that will be posted into general ledger. Notice these amounts are different and that could happen in situations where you actually include a portion of the revenue in one item and decrease the price of another item. From here, we'll close that window, and if we go back to the Manage option on our Action Pane and go back to our Revenue Recognition section, we have another menu item called Expected Revenue Recognition Schedule. I'll choose that menu item, and this will open up the Expected Revenue Schedule that will be created. Now again, this is just based on the confirmation date of the sales order at this point. So the dates that we're seeing for the Recognize Date column may change when we actually do the invoice itself. The important pieces of information you're seeing here though are the, the estimated recognized date, along with the actual amounts that will be recognized in, on each of those dates or periods. Notice at the bottom we have our one occurrence item also for the full $321. Now if I had put a date of October in my start and my end date, that recognized date would be pushed out also to the month of October. I'll choose to close this page, and from here I'm gonna go ahead and choose to invoice the sales order. When we do the invoice of the sales order, uh, what happens is that the expected revenue schedule that we just created or viewed will actually be removed and the actual revenue schedule be created. I'm gonna to choose to invoice all of my lines of my sales order and choose okay to generate the invoice. From here, we can go up to the journals invoice at the top and take a look at the accounting entry that was created. If we look at the voucher, I just wanna point out again that the amounts that we're seeing here on the accounting side for general ledger are different than the amounts that were reflected to the customer on the sales order and the invoice. So if you see here, here's our product sales line. This was for our laptop, which the customer was charged $1,100. But because of the pre revenue price reallocation, we're actually charging a different amount. Also, the deferred revenue reflects the two lines that had a revenue schedule assigned to them. In this situation, we can see that those two amounts are actually going to be deferred. If we go back and X out of those two pages, I'm going to go back to the Manage option on my Action Pane. 
And notice my expected revenue recognition schedule menu item is now disabled because that revenue schedule is now replaced with the actual schedule. If I choose the revenue recognition schedule menu item, here is the actual schedule that was created as a result of the invoice. At this point in time, we could choose to recognize the revenue using the create journal option. I hope this gives you a good overview of the basic functionality for revenue recognition. Additional documentation will also be available and can be found at docs.microsoft.com. Thank you for your time.